My name is uh, Shankar Krishnamurti. I lead the Partner Solutions Architecture team working with cloud providers um, and other ISV and tech partners, um, including um, Amazon. And we have a very strong relationship with Amazon and um, there are a couple of slides in this on which I will talk to that. Um, so today's presentation, we are going to talk a little bit about the Redis, um, its roots, the technology it provides, um, we'll also do a short product demo to show how easy it is to actually uh, set up things. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our industry adoption and use cases, and then we will conclude uh, with some call to actions. So that's roughly the way that we will go through the next, hopefully, 20 minutes. Um, so to give a little bit of a background, um, about who we are. Um, we are a popular in-memory open source database. Um, and Ron talked about our roots as an open source um, uh, technology. And that is very appropriate given where we started or had started. Um, but since then we have also grown, as you can see for, uh, from some of the data points that I have added, um, we have uh, secured uh, venture capital funding. Um, and from a technology per, I mean, perspective, we play in the area of what we would call as the NoSQL database. So Redis underlying does not have um, uh, what you would think about in a traditional database model. And for those who may have been um, familiar with the relational database, Redis provides technologies um, that aim to serve a constituency, especially in the cloud and the modern applications um, where we are talking about um, latency being the critical element as a part of serving requests. Um, and the last thing as a part of who we are, I would like to highlight um, is our strategic partnership with AWS um, including our product being listed as a part of the marketplace. So that's a little bit of an overview for where we are, um, where we come from. In terms of a technology uh, perspective, um, I'll, I'll start all the way at the bottom because that's where we always start, which is the OSS. Um, from a Redis perspective, think of Redis as providing key data structures that facilitate your ability to store and retrieve data at a pretty um, fast speed and at scale. Um, the product itself uh, came into existence um, where the company um, and was trying to solve the problem of how we could serve um, e-commerce um, web um, clients at scale. Uh, so think about in terms of millions um, or tens of millions of requests coming per second. And as the internet and the networks um, have continued to evolve, speed becomes paramount uh, or latency in the case of how quickly a customer can actually submit requests and how fast they can see responses. So Redis plays a major role in that uh, space. And the open source Redis, the way we started with that story, you could see the key fundamental data structures um, that provide the underpinnings of how you would store retrieve data. And then as Redis started maturing, we started adding capabilities. Um, so you see things like the developer experience being coming into the foreplay. Um, so tools like Redis Insight, which is a, again, whatever I'm sharing here is available as open source. And then obviously we will talk a little bit about the enterprise capabilities, but the Redis Insight is a, a tool or a, de a developer focused tool that we provide that allows folks who are using Redis to then gain an insight into how their data is stored, performing, et cetera. We also work with the open source community to ensure that as we release new um, rels of, I mean, the open source Redis, um, that the 
libraries that people use for developing applications are also in sync. So we provide uh, libraries with Java, with .NET, Node.js, Python, et cetera. Um, and some of the popular uh, client libraries are shown there. Um, and then as we move up the stack, um, we as a company have started providing um, more what I would call as extended models that serve a variety of use cases. So you see things like event streaming, queries and searches, um, and then caching uh, frameworks that provide capabilities as well as server-side functions. Um, and then when you think about the enterprise-grade capabilities beyond the open source space itself, we provide the key non-functional capabilities that typically enterprises look for as they deploy um, a software in their environment, meaning being in their data center or in the cloud. So that's a high level overview of the technology itself in terms of where we start, the kind of capabilities that we build on, and then at the enterprise tier itself. In terms of deployment options, um, so Redis provides a couple of um, ways to do the deployments. Um, obviously this talk is focused a little bit more on the fully managed and hosted side, but we provide capabilities for enterprises to download our bits, have it be installed on VMs um, on, on your premise or we support container options. Obviously we support Amazon EKS. Um, so you can uh, have in a self-managed world, uh, Redis be deployed and managed uh, on your EKS clusters. Um, and then more importantly, we also support a fully managed and hosted solution. So in this case, we provide the Redis platform as a service, so the database as a service, and it is a fully managed and hosted in that sense that you just treat that capability no different than any other managed service capability. And it relieves you of the operational complexities of either setting up, managing it, upgrading it, backup restores, all those kind of good stuff. And including ensuring that the releases are kept up to date, um, the vulnerabilities are being managed on the back end for you at the platform level. And we provide this as um, a capability on the AWS marketplace, which means customers get full advantage of using um, their uh, accounts and their um, any uh, discounts that they would have to actually leverage Redis to be deployed. So that's a little bit of a, um, the, the set of options that you as a customer have um, as a part of deploying Redis. Um, in terms of when we see why the customers love the Redis Enterprise Cloud, um, some of the key things that jump out um, are things around the availability, so Redis is one of the only NoSQL um, database um, in this category um, that we serve that provides five nines of availability at scale. Um, that's pretty complex considering that we are able to do so um, at performance scale across AZs, um, et cetera. We provide a sub millisecond latency um, at scale, which is again the core uh, reason or one of the main reasons has, I had stated before, the product got originated. Um, we provide active geo replications with conflict-free resolutions. Um, so that's um, a way uh, of saying how, when you deploy Redis um, in a geo-distributed environment, that your data is kept consistent. Um, and then, like I said, um, we provide a set of uh, modular capabilities 
with um, the icons being shown there include things like time series or probabilistic searches or JSON, um, et cetera, that allow people to extend Redis usage beyond the core data structures that it comes with. And our uh, model that allows you, as you had seen from the previous slide of the deployment options is that you can run pretty much anywhere, either in your data center or in the cloud and in the cloud in a managed way, um, um, et cetera. And we provide this in a way, hopefully, that is uh, reducing your total cost of ownership as you try to use uh, the product. Um, in terms of key areas where we differentiate ourselves against the open source space, um, you could see that I have categorized this into a set of segments. So starting with deployment options, obviously when you think about uh, the Redis Enterprise, it gives you a variety of different options that you can go, including the most important part being the fully managed and hosted solution, right? Available on cloud. We talked a little bit about high availability. Um, the details are provided there, but the more important part is whether it is in the replication space or being able to provide failover, uh, we provide best in class type um, story. Um, enterprise level support is another key thing for enterprises that are keen on making sure that we are able to provide that support um, against SLAs, which is very important as people are using that in the context of supporting their critical applications. Um, and then on the right, you see uh, the key thing that I would highlight are things like the module support. Um, so as I had touched on the, the slide previous, where we talked about how Redis as a product technology has evolved, um, we also try to make sure that that those capabilities are seamless to use, be it whether it is search, JSON, time series. These are all extended capabilities that are building on top of core Redis capabilities. They are also available as open source, but the difference is that when you do this as an enterprise uh, type environment, you get that all bundled in. It's already kind of baked in and good to go. The alternate way on the open source is that you are managing it yourself. Um, and then the, the key part of the object mapping libraries, the developer experience aspect that I touched on is us ensuring that with the release of the versions that we are ensuring all the um, developer libraries are kept in sync, uh, which is a key expectation that our customers would have as a part of adopting a product. Um, from a record of success introduction, especially this is a slide that is showing with respect to our managed service environment. So the fully hosted and managed service environment, I mean, the stats that you see speak for themselves. Um, the key thing that I would highlight is the zero data loss. Um, Despite whatever we have seen as an underlying story um, and across millions of databases created, et cetera, the, the, the key uh, takeaway is that Redis has supported a lot of different databases, continue to support a lot of different databases that the customers create on the fully managed service that we deploy. And more importantly, we ensure best-in-class support in production. What I'll do is I'll quickly switch to a product demo that highlights um, the ease of deploying Redis, um, the database as a service on AWS. So hopefully you guys can see the screen. In this product, yep, it's all good. Yep. I will showcase how easy it is to deploy a fully managed database as a service with Redis Enterprise Cloud on AWS. We are going to start with AWS Web Console. And we are going to search for Redis Enterprise Cloud and then click on the 
marketplace link here that will yield our Redis Enterprise Cloud listings. You have an annual commit and a pay as you go listing here. I will choose pay as you go for now for this demonstration purpose. When I click on the view purchase options, that brings me to this screen. On the top banner, you will see a link to the set up your account, which will take you to the Redis Web Console. Now, this Redis Web Console is basically a single pane of glass to manage all of your Redis Enterprise Cloud deployments. I will go ahead and log in using my credentials, which in this case is configured as a single sign-on using Okta. Once I log in, I can click on the new subscription button on the left-hand navigation bar. This will bring me to the subscription options page as seen here. I'm going to choose flexible plan and select AWS as my cloud service provider. I will choose a specific region. I want to deploy my Redis Enterprise Cloud cluster on AWS. I'll give this subscription a name. Then I will choose multi-AZ option as yes to deploy my Redis cluster with replication features spanning across multiple AZs for automatic failover with fault tolerance. I'll choose a new VPC here and I'll define a CIDR for my new VPC. Then I'll click, click continue. Now that brings me to this databases screen. Here is where I will configure my databases. I'll go ahead and give my first database that I'm going to configure a name. I can select the throughput and also the memory footprint in uh, gigabytes. And then I'll click Save Database. That brings me back to the database screen here again. Let me add another database exclusively purpose-built for my search use case. In this case, I'm going to install a Redis module called Redis Search 2 and Redis JSON. Now, this combination of these two modules gives me the ability to build a document-based database along with the ability to do search over these JSON objects or JSON documents that I'll be storing in this database. So far, I have two databases and I can edit these database design configurations and change any configuration parameters such as memory footprint, etc. Let me go ahead and add another third database for my time series based analytics. I will define the throughput as 5000 and a memory footprint of 15 gigabytes. And of course, I will select the install Redis time series module for this database. Here you go. I have all the three purpose-built databases to deploy onto my Redis Enterprise cluster. One database for generic caching use case, one for document-based database, another one that is for persisting time series data. So in total, I have three purpose-built databases on my Redis cluster. Now, if I click continue, that takes me to the review page. Here I can see a summary of all of my databases configured, the cloud resources required to spin this Redis cluster, which includes the instance type and EBS volume required for the databases, and a breakdown of Redis shards that are going to be spent for this configuration, along with the quantity and the pricing details. Finally, you will see a subscription price per hour or month. And when you hit the continue button, it will start provisioning your subscription as a Redis Enterprise Cloud cluster running on global infrastructure provided by AWS. I'm gonna hit the cancel button here for, for the sake because I already pre-provisioned many other databases. And it navigates you back to the main home screen where you can see all of these provisioned subscriptions. So it is that easy to provision Redis Enterprise Cloud based database as a service on AWS. You can completely automate everything that I showcased here with Terraform Redis Enterprise Cloud provider, or you can develop your own custom scripting using the REST APIs that Redis Enterprise Cloud provides. So that is what it takes to build a Redis Enterprise Cloud based database as a service in the cloud on AWS. Thank you so much. So, um, as you guys saw, 
the ease oops, um, of providing uh, or provisioning databases is fairly straightforward when it comes to deploying the fully hosted managed solution on the AWS cloud. Uh, moving on, um, what I'm showing here um, for the audience is a set of vertical industries in which um, we have worked with customers um, that um, rely on the Redis Enterprise um, cloud solutions. Um, and you can see that we span across financial services to technology, to healthcare life sciences. Um, in terms of broad use cases as to where we try to serve the customer needs, um, caching, which is where we originally started our story uh, back, um, that continues to be a core part of where the customers adopt us. But beyond caching, you can also see where people are beginning to use um, the Redis Enterprise Cloud in a variety of environments. So whether it be it in the context of modern application building using microservices, and then more importantly, in the context of doing um, in vertical solutions. So fraud detection, uh, transaction scoring, uh, real-time forecasting, et cetera. One of the key things that I would also highlight is as we have been building up capabilities in Redis, um, generative AI, which has been a theme in today's uh, talk track, um, is something that Redis continues to look at and more importantly, start providing support for. So key use cases that you see like fraud detection, uh, we are actually working with AWS in the context of the Gen AI space to provide um, support um, and integrations for things uh, like the, the basic Gen AI capabilities or uh, for feature store capabilities. Um, and primarily our focus is on doing things like similarity searches. Um, so that is a bird's eye view of where um, we have been working with AWS, the kind of um, the solutions that we provide, talking a little bit about the partnership itself. Hey, Shankar, uh, we've got yes. about one minute left. So if you could summarize, I'd appreciate it so I could keep moving along. Sure. Okay. So the, the key thing that I wanted to highlight, um, Ron, and then for the audience is that we have a, a key strategic partnership in place with AWS. Um, we actually um, provided or we created the SEA agreement, which is a collaboration agreement, which was with them last year. And then the last thing that you can see is that you can also leverage the solution through the marketplace. I will skip this slide in the interest of time. Um, in terms of call to action resources as a part of the slide deck that you can see, is um, a set of links that I have provided that allows you to go and try um, what I had shown uh, and get started today.